Hello, Edu Magicians. Welcome to the Edu Magic Podcast with your host, Dr. Sam Fesich. Dr. Sam is a professor of education, author of Edu Magic, and a pumpkin spice latte fan. This podcast is designed for pre service teachers. Remember, friends, teaching doesn't begin at graduation, but during that first class at 8 a.m. Let's get this party started. I'm Dennis Sheeran. And I'm Raven Steinmetz from the Instant Relevance Podcast. And we're part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hello, Edumagicians. It's Dr. Sam. And today I'm back with an episode called Be Fantastic This Fall. Now, I'm really excited to share some tips to help you out during this fall semester. So some of you might be starting college for the first time. Others, you know, you might be starting back in person for a long time. You know, you've been online. But I have some tips and strategies to help you be successful during this fall semester. Before we jump into these tips, try to make this semester the last semester you have digital portfolio written on your to-do list. Friends, I know you have it on your to-do list to get that digital portfolio done or at least started, right? So if you're looking for some strategies to help you out, I highly recommend my digital course, Digital Portfolio from Scratch to Interview Ready. It's never too early or too late to get started on your digital portfolio. So head on over to sfesich.com slash courses. That's S-F-E-C-I-C-H dot com slash courses. And there you'll find information about other digital courses that I have, but specifically the digital portfolio from scratch to interview ready. All right. So today we are talking all about some tips to get started to having a fabulous, fantastic fall semester. For many of us, the school year is just starting. So I think this episode is ready to roll and ready for you. With new beginnings and getting into a new routine, it can be overwhelming, right? Here are some tips to help you for a fantastic fall semester. Now, they're not in any particular order. They're just as they came to me. So first and foremost, review the syllabus of the courses that you were in. That's right. Actually, read it over. I know it's a great document, pretty long, right? But that syllabus is actually a promise from a professor to to you, the student, showing you what to expect during the class. It has important information like required class materials. Um, So make sure you have the required books and materials and resources that you need. It has information like when is the professor's office hours, their contact information as well. In addition to class dates and times. Now, this could be important, especially if you know your your course will have some virtual days or days in the field or days in which you're not meeting at all so make sure you're writing that on your schedule it also has information about course assignments and test due dates along with midterm and final exam dates and you're going to want to take all that information especially those assignments test due dates all those good fun things and put them on your calendar we're going to talk about that more in just a minute So review that syllabus. Actually look over each one for each of your classes. Take note as to when um, the professor's office hours are. Where where is their office located? How do you contact your professor? What are the course materials, uh, required course materials? And even look at some of the recommended course materials because that could be helpful as well. And then look at those course assignments and due dates and mark those on your calendar. We'll talk about that again in just a minute. Next up, we have attending class. Okay, I know this one's based yeah okay I got it no actually show up for class not just physically but actually be present in that class so that being said make time for a morning routine so you are ready ready both physically and mentally for that class set up a morning routine where you are taking care of yourself whether that is getting breakfast or working out or taking some time for meditation or time in prayer and just making sure that you are ready both physically and mentally for class. Don't just roll out of bed and head out uh, to class in your PJs, you know, unless it's pajama day, which, you know, might happen. But show up for yourself because your future self will thank you. Show up and be, be present during class. So try to tune out those distractions. Try to like take down uh, that Amazon shopping tab that you've been working on or you know um, take down other tabs that might be distracting for you. You can also set up timers on social media apps so that you actually block it out during specific times on cl- of class so you're not scrolling during class. Be present, take notes, 
uh, yeah, just, just be present in class. It's going to help you out in the long run. And if you're looking for a great way to take notes, if you head on over to the OneNote um, blog post, I put it in the show notes. You guys can check it out. Um, it, OneNote has fantastic, and I mean fantastic, page templates for you to check out um, where it walks you through how to take notes, uh, detailed lecture notes. Um, it has like, what are three important ideas from this lecture? What's my homework? What questions do I have? and understanding like, hey, it's okay to have questions and get to know your professors. We're going to talk about that in just a moment here, but ask those questions because you think you might remember the question, but write it down. Um, and, you, and if you're a little too shy to share it in class, email it or direct message it to your professor. That could be helpful. All right, so remember how we talked about, you know, we talked about reading the syllabus and writing in those assignments. Let's talk about our schedule. So it's important to use a digital or a paper schedule, whatever fits your um, whatever fits your needs to schedule and organize in all the things. And I know I did a whole episode on getting yourself organized. That is linked in the show notes as well. You guys can check that out. But on your schedule, put in your class times, dates, and location. Um, grab it if you would like to have something that is digital, or and you can print this out as well. The future teacher planner. Head on over to EduMatch Publishing. You can find that there. I have a link to that in the show notes. But schedule in not only your academics on your schedule, but also time for organization and clubs and time for you and your relationships as well. You want to be able to have time in the week that helps support you as a teacher, your academics, and your learning, but also times for relationships and time to invest in you. By giving yourself time during the week, you're able to take small moments to reinvest in yourself so you're not burned out by the end of the week and feeling overwhelmed. Edgy magicians, there's no, honestly, there's no such thing as balance. I really think like having a perfect 50-50 scale is like a unicorn. It sounds really cool, but it probably doesn't exist. Sometimes your day is going to have more academics and learning than it does relationships and self-care. Other days you're going to have a lot of self-care. Where maybe your self-care is like binging whatever's on Netflix, whatever you're watching on Netflix. And other times, not so much academics, maybe on the weekends. But think about, you want to have bits of both of those in your day. So you don't get overwhelmed and you make time for yourself and make time for those relationships. Strive for a little bit in each category each day. Now, again, during the weekday, your courses and academics might take more of um, a lead, but make sure you have time for your relationships and yourself as well. That's just as important. So you don't get overwhelmed so you can take care of yourself. Another thing, another area to have a fabulous, fantastic fall semester is get to know your professors and your peers. So I'm speaking from the perspective, per professor perspective, <laughs> the professor perspective here. We are here to help you. We want to see you succeed in class. So please ask questions, engage in conversation, engage in class, participate. Don't just show up and check off the box. I'm here, but really immerse yourself in that in that 50 minute or that 80 minute class. Be there for you and learn as much as you can. Again, as you get to know your professors, if you're struggling with something, just ask. Again, we are here to help and support you. Bottom line, we are here to help you. If you're struggling with anything, if you're not understanding something, if something's not clear to you, just ask. And if you're nervous to ask during class, send an email or send a direct message or show up during office hours. Another great thing during the fall semester that you're going to want to do is find a good study spot. Now, for some of you, I know like you're all about, I need the coffee shop. You know, I need that, um, Lot, lots of caffeine, the background noise, um, the music playing, people walking in and out. That's my kind of study spot. For others, you're like, oh my gosh, I need quiet. So the library might be a better spot for you. So find a spot on campus that works for you to get your work done and make some time to go into those spaces so you can look at what you have on your schedule and organize that schedule appropriately and get that work done in spaces that are going to help you learn. I recommend not studying um, in your bed, in your dorm, because your bed should be, a, you know, your sacred sleeping place. And instead, you know, study at the desk or study down in the lobby of your dorm or go to a coffee shop or go to the library, go to the student union, um, go to the library, whatever works for you to get your studying to get your studying done. And for some tips whenever you're reading content, um, I know sometimes, you know, I'll be reading a page 
and I'll get to the end. I'm like, what did I just read? I have no idea. Now I got to go back and reread it. So you might want to have a highlighter there, but be careful not to highlight the entire paragraph. I know there's some of you out there. I was like that too. Highlight the important pieces. Jot it down in a notebook or jot it down in your OneNote notebook or in a digital notebook of some sort. Um, some of the notes as you read. So whenever you're going into class, before class, you can actually review very quickly those notes. And that's something um, to think about as you're traveling from class to class. If you're sitting outside of class, say um, class ends at 8.50 and you have another one at 9 o'clock and it's right down the hall, get that notebook out and review the content that you just learned or that you're going to be uh, looking at in the next class just to kind of get your brain primed for that new information. So another thing you're going to want to do is find career services, get to know your career services department and start to work on your resume and cover letter. Now I know freshmen, you might be thinking, what? Re resume and cover letter? I don't think so. Friends, it is never, 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 never too early to get started on refining your professional teacher resume. Career services can also help you find summer internship opportunities because friends, you never, ever know where a conversation could lead. So get to know career services. They are there to help you with your resume, interviewing, internships. And, you know, by getting to know them early, you know, they can kind of have, um, have you on their radar thinking, okay, this person wants to find a summer job opportunity back home at a camp. So they can start looking for things and help support you in that way. So career services, get to know them, set up a meeting and all that great stuff. Up next, campus resources. Oh my goodness, friends, there are so many campus resources out there to help you. So just a few examples would be the Writing Center. If there's a Writing Center on campus to help you with citing resources, creating outlines, getting research, library services. Oh my goodness, those librarians are besties. They are fantastic at helping you find research articles um, and content to help you with your paper. Tutoring services for some courses or departments, there might be tutoring services. So if you're struggling in a class, look to see if there's tutoring available for that class. Or if you're totally rocking it in a class and you've already taken a course, you might want to offer tutoring services. Meet with your advisor. Yes, friends, meet with your advisor. We are here to help support you throughout your college career, whether it's scheduling or courses, what courses to take. But you know, we're also here um, after all that scheduling is done to help support you in your teaching goals as well. You might also want to get to know counseling services. College campuses offer fantastic counseling services to help support you because I know going um, into your freshman year, it can be overwhelming. You could be dealing with lots of emotions. Get to know counseling services. They're there to help support you because we want to help you mind, body, and soul. So counseling services, fantastic for that. And then also disability services. So if you have some accommodations or adaptations or modifications that need to be made, contact disability services and advocate for those areas. Now, another area that you might be feeling is maybe missing home a little bit, and especially if you're going um, into your freshman year on a college campus, or if you've been home due to the pandemic and you're moving back into that college campus life, you might be feeling a little homesick. And guys, please know that that is completely and 100% normal. It is okay to be missing um, your home and family and friends in your hometown. That's why it's important, you know, we're gonna go back to that scheduling that we talked about earlier. That's why it's important to look to see to make sure you're making times for relationships, both new and old relationships that you're reconnecting, maybe um, sending a text or making a call. Um, you know, sometimes that might just be, you know, call call your family every Tuesday at, you know, 9 p.m. or something like that. So, you know, you always have that line open and that line of communication or just sending a quick text. Um, that could also help as well. Uh, so keep those lines of communication open. It is okay and perfectly normal to miss home, family, friends, all that. But, you know, make time to keep those relationships in your life. And that's why it's important to go back to that schedule and sprinkle in time for relationships so you don't get all consumed and overwhelmed with academics and coursework that you're also building in those relationships. Another thing we're gonna do to have a fabulous, fantastic fall semester is to get enough sleep. Okay, I know it might be like a badge of honor to pull an all-nighter and stay up all night and get all that done, but friends, oh my gosh. 
the day after, oh, you will not be happy with yourself. So it's so important to get enough sleep. Let me say it again. Get enough sleep. We recommend striving for seven to eight hours for adults a night. So that being said, Set up your alarm. Get enough. Get up in enough time to get your morning routine done. Turn off notifications on your phone. Turn out the light and go to sleep. Now, for some of you who have roommates that might be night owls, get um, some ear earplugs or something like that so you can sleep. Um, get enough sleep. It is so important. It's not overrated. Get enough sleep during the night. That way you can wake up refreshed and ready for the day ahead. So let's recap those areas to help you have a fantastic fall. First, review that syllabus. Actually go to class. Look at your schedule. Um, schedule in times for academics and learning along with clubs and organizations, self-care and relationships. Get to know professors and peers in your class. You might want to set up a study group to see who has similar majors. Set up study groups. Get to know the people around you. Get to know your cohort because those are the people that are going to help support you throughout your college career. Find a study spot on or off campus that works for you. Get in touch with career services. Get to know campus resources like the writing center, tutoring services, your advisor, counseling and disability services. Know that it's okay, 100% normal to miss home. So that's why we got to keep, uh, keep those relationships going, both new and old. Also, get enough sleep. Go for seven to eight hours. That is the goal. Work on that. If you're like, oh my gosh, I'm getting like five or six, work on striving for seven to eight hours a night. So I know that these were just a few tips to help you during your fall semester. And I know that you have more. So what I would love for you guys to do, if you head on over to the show notes, there's a link to a blog post that talks about all of these. Share in the comments, what are your tips for a successful fall semester? Or even better, have a, head on over to Instagram and tag me in a post with your go-to tip that's helping you be successful this semester. We are all better together. The more tips, the merrier. So I would love to see what your tips are for a fantastic fall. Remember, friends, you have the edgy magic within you and have a fantastic fall semester. Bye for now. There you have it, Edu Magicians. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with your friends. For more Edu Magic, check out sfesich.com and follow Dr. Sam on Twitter and Instagram at sfesich. Until next time, you have the Edu Magic within you.